Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, September 13th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, today is Monday, and uh, today at 7 o'clock, there's a ministry team leaders meeting, and I believe it's on Zoom. Uh, so a ministry team leaders meeting tonight at 7. I believe it's on Zoom. If you're a ministry team leader, uh, you know better than I do whether it's on Zoom or not. Uh, but uh, they're going to be talking about reopening stuff. How do we, how do we, uh, they're going to be helping to, uh, with our, thinking through our planning for outreach and, and uh, reopening. So I'm very excited about hearing what comes from that meeting. Uh, you had a good service yesterday at Arlington Reformed Church. We're grateful to Arlington for being our hosts for 18 months, uh, for just over a year, actually. And um, But we're also very glad that uh, next Sunday is our last Sunday at Arlington Reformed as a, as a uh, for worship there. We're glad to be back in our own home. So that's exciting. The pews were installed and completely completed, and that's exciting here. And we're getting ready to receive people back. Uh, for worship here at DeGarmo Road. Uh, just as a heads up today, I have a dentist appointment early on, and then I'm going to be going to help purchase some equipment uh, at Alto Music, and then I'll be picking up some equipment at Arlington Reform to bring here. So if you're hoping to come in this morning to help with, uh, with volunteer work, I won't be here. So I'll leave a note on the door, but um, I won't be here probably until noonish today, uh, maybe a little before, hopefully. So anyway, thank you so much for all those who've been volunteering. And this afternoon, I'll be here and would look forward to having volunteer help here today. Um, on Sunday, I preached out of Zechariah chapter 4. My title was True Religion in False Hearts. And the idea here is that, um, you know, there's, we, we as evangelicals, we, we often like to say things like, I don't have a religion or I don't like religion. I just like my relationship with Jesus. Uh, we contrast a religion with a relationship, and um, you know, I, I see the value in that contrast. I, I've I've used that phrase myself, and uh, it's not that, nothing wrong with it, except that I don't think it's fully true. <laughs> I think that's the issue: is that uh, even the most relationship-focused Christian has a, a religious structure to their life. If they pray, if they read the Bible, if they go to church, if they uh, you know, uh, fast, if they uh, take communion, if they're baptized, uh, if they have a particular style of worship that their church follows, um, they have a religion, right? Um, the, the word religion just describes uh, the set of beliefs and practices that go along with your relationship with Jesus, that are part of it, that, that follow from it, um, and that you share in common with other believers. There's nothing wrong with religion. In fact, the Bible uses the word religion very positively. Um, but the Bible makes a distinction between true religion and false religion, between a religion, and, and, the, and the difference is that true religion that God values comes out of a heart of dedication to God, a heart of love toward God. And that's the distinction. You know, and, and I think that this comes through very clearly in the question of, of routines, of habits, of, of spiritual disciplines. Um, as Christians, we talk about spiritual disciplines from time to time, the discipline of Bible reading, spending time each day or on a regular basis systematically reading scripture to fill our hearts and our minds with the truth of God's word. The discipline of memorization of scripture is another key spiritual discipline. It takes time, it takes effort to memorize scripture. It's important to get God's word deep into our hearts so that it is uh, at our, at our sub-basement of our lives, not just uh, up in the superstructure. Uh, we take over the daily spiritual discipline of prayer. Prayer is a spiritual discipline. We're spending time uh, in God's presence, listening to God, speaking to God of the things that are on our hearts, uh, worshiping God and, and asking God for, for his intervention in uh, situations that we care about in our lives. 
Uh, the discipline of uh, fasting is another one. Uh, not my favorite discipline, a discipline I have a lot of trouble with, but fasting is, is a spiritual discipline where you spend uh, time apart from food and drawing closer to God uh, because of either mourning for our sin or a deep longing to be close to God that makes food even seem unappealing. Spiritual disciplines, there's many more. Uh, discipline of meditation, there's the discipline of simplicity. Uh, there's a great book by Richard Foster called The Celebration of Discipline, which is, uh, is a, just a fantastic, classic, important text on Christian disciplines. Uh, disciplines, spiritual disciplines help to ground our faith in the reality of day-to-day -day practice. Uh, tithing, giving generously, these are important disciplines. Uh, things that we do to express our faith, but even more so, things that we do to reinforce uh, the truths of our faith on a regular basis in our lives. Some people really benefit from routine. I think actually all people really benefit from routine to some degree. To a greater or lesser degree, depending on our personality, we benefit from routines. Um, but I think that all people do benefit somewhat from routines, that having a, a daily discipline of spending time in prayer and in God's word, in silence before God, that's a daily discipline that yields a deep positive fruit in the life of a believer. Uh, practicing generosity, serving others, uh, spending some time in meditation each day, meditating on the scriptures. Uh, the, the discipline of simplicity, trying to divest yourself of all that you do not need in order to free up space in order to give. Um, these are disciplines, these are daily routines that are, are helpful and, 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 and wind up uh, deepening our faith in Christ. Uh, we do routines all the time. I, I mean, some of you know that at, in our Sunday morning service, I have routines that I follow. Uh, things that I say at the beginning of the service, uh, things that I say with regard to the box. Why do I always say that there's something in the box? I don't know what it is, but it's got something to do with Jesus because Jesus has something to do with every part of our lives. Why do I say that every Sunday? I say it because I want the kids to remember that Jesus has something to do with every part of our lives. And if I say it every Sunday, it will get deeply ingrained in their minds. That's why I sing the box song. The box, the box, the box. I wonder what's in the box. And you know what? Um, I've been doing that for 15 years when I do the box. Uh, no, 18 years when I do the box. And uh, folks 18 years ago who uh, were with me in, in, in my church in Rochester who were there at the beginning when I started singing that song for the box, um, they can't get a delivery from Amazon.com without saying the box, the box, the box. I wonder what's in the box. And that brings to mind the fact that Jesus has something to do with every part of our lives. I got a new one that I'm, I'm going to be trying out. I tried it out last week and I forgot to do it this week. But after reading scripture, uh, a lot of pastors will say, uh, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. It's a, it's a quote from the scripture. Why would I want to say that every Sunday? Because I want us to remember that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That's why routines can be helpful in getting the truth deep into our hearts at a place where it comes out at a moment's notice. The problem with routines, of course, is they can become devoid of uh, of, of true uh meaning. They can become rote. And um, so that's the that's the push-pull, right? Routines can put uh, the, the word and the truth deep into our hearts, but they can also strip it of meaning if we allow them to become just things that we say. Um, and how do, we, how do we avoid that? Well, we avoid that by uh, focusing our hearts and our minds each time we do it as best we can uh, on the truth that it's trying to convey. It is a discipline. It is an effort that we put into it. Just like if you go to the gym uh, and you get on the treadmill, you, know, you can just kind of amble along 
and it won't actually be beneficial to you on the treadmill. But if you go on the treadmill and you do the best that you can and push yourself, then uh, it becomes of immense value as it expands your capacities. The same is true for our daily routines and our daily disciplines. As we do them, we concentrate on the God who's behind them. We, we do these daily disciplines, we daily, do these daily routines as a form of worship to God. We focus our hearts on him. We, we exert our effort on it. And then it grows, goes deep into our hearts, it sinks in, and it begins to permeate every aspect of our lives. Routines can be very helpful or they can be harmful depending on whether we let them become just rituals or if we focus on the truth that's behind them and the God who we love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us, Lord, and thank you that uh, you call us to you each day. And Lord, we, we do give our lives to you day by day. Thank you for those who are uh, taking part in this daily devotional. Lord, I pray that it would become more, be, it would be and remain more than just a ritual, but it would be something where they bend their hearts towards you. Um, Lord, and help me, protect me, Lord, from, from the dangers of, of ritual uh, that becomes empty. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for this, this beautiful day. Please be with our ministry team leaders tonight as they meet at 7. I pray that you'd bless them, encourage them, and, and that they would be able to, to help lead the church through their work tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. Why do I say that every week? Why do I say that every day? Because I love you, New Beginnings. And I am looking forward to talking to you again tomorrow.